Hi, I'm Karen. This video shows you how to register certificates for the activities performed. In the next few minutes, I will impersonate an ACP and register certificates using TESA. Registering certificates does not need any intervention by IPART, except where a pre-registration audit has taken place or where you decide to pay IPART offline. Let's go to TESA and get started. I'm going to log in as an ACP user. I have already completed my application for accreditation as well as any relevant audits. I have arrived on the TESA landing page. TESA stands for the Energy Security Safeguard Application. I have downloaded the sample file from the IPART website and I have looked at the implementation fields that I need to populate. The sample file looks something like this. The activities and calculation methods in your implementation data must match the approved accreditation features. I have completed my implementation file and saved it as a CSV. Let's raise a case to register certificates. My organization name, ID, and my name have been filled in automatically. First, let's select the accreditation type. Then select your accreditation ID. If you find your accreditation ID missing from this list, it means that there's another case in progress using that accreditation. You will need to go to My Cases, find that certificate registration case and either cancel or complete that case by paying it. Has there been a pre-registration audit? For now, let's leave this field alone. Type in the vintage. The vintage needs to match your implementation dates. Read through the acknowledgement and click the checkbox. You can decide to pay offline. For now, we'll leave this alone. Please note that it will take two to three days for the payment to come through. In the meantime, you will not be able to register any more certificates with that accreditation until we have received the payment. Let's upload our file. Browse and find your file. There are a lot of validations behind the scenes to check various conditions such as the version of the rule and whether or not the activities in the file are part of your features and so on. The most common error is where the implementation identifier is not unique. Let's fix this in our CSV file. I save my file. I then need to delete the older file and re-upload the updated file. Once I have resolved any red validation errors, I will see an implementation upload data summary. So once I've had a review, I can then submit my case. Once the case is submitted, the case number is generated and the state of the case is new. I can see a snapshot of all my variables. And if I scroll down, I can see the certificate batch generated by my implementation data. I can see the volumetric limit, which we updated upon my import. And I can also review my implementation data. If I am happy with this, I can click accept. If I click cancel, I will need to raise a new case for certificate registration. Let's click accept. What happens next? Since I did not select a pre-registration audit, nor did I tick offline payment, if I am happy to proceed, I can now pay the registration fee. So I'll click on proceed to payment. Before that, I can view my invoice. So I can click on that. Depending on your browser, there will be a pop-up for you to then click on and view your invoice, which would look something like this. Let's proceed to payment. The customer payment portal appears. Enter in your payment details and validate the card. You can then click pay now. If for any reason you are unable to complete the payment, you can always go back to my cases, scroll down to the bottom of the case and click on the return to CPP payment button. Let's pay now. Upon successful payment, you will see a verification message. I can click on the here link to go back to my case. I see that the case date is now complete. The certificates are now visible on the My Certificates widget, as well on the Public Registry of Certificates. 
At any point in time, I can also go back to my cases to view my case. Members of my organization will also receive an email notification confirming the case is complete. Okay, how about scenario two? What if I do select a pre-registration audit and or an offline payment? Let's raise another case. This time, I'll select a pre-registration audit. Only completed pre-registration audit cases will appear in this list. This time, I will also select offline payment. After I've uploaded my file, I can then submit the case. As before, a case number has been generated and the state is new. I can then proceed to accept the case. Now, if I scroll back up to the top of my case, I will see the state is now open. This is because I've selected pre-registration audit, or if I had selected only offline payment, the state would be payment instead. The case is now awaiting IPART review, and in this scenario, an additional payment verification. Once IPART have approved the pre-registration audit and, in this case, the offline payment, the state becomes complete, and those certificates will now be visible on the My Certificates widget as well as the Public Certificate Registry.